and got my hands on one of the brand new matte gold Nexus 6Ps from Huawei. I'll give you a little color comparison between the aluminum, matte gold, and graphite. Which color do you think looks best? Let me know down in the comments. I think we can all agree that this is a pretty darn good looking phone. This particular teardown video is going to be focusing purely from a hardware perspective. We're going to start by turning the phone off, removing the SIM card, and heating up the back glass. Now to remove the back glass, I'd say you have a 50-50 shot of getting it off in one piece. I heated it up until it was too hot to touch with just my fingers, and then tried to slide a brand new, sharp razor blade between the bottom edge of the lens and the glass itself. Turns out the glue held onto the lens pretty darn tight, and it ended up coming off in chunks instead of one piece. I tried it again successfully with my graphite Nexus 6P and it worked perfect. I've seen some other guys come at it from the far right side, but either way, if you fail and the lens cracks, the replacement part is only $20 right now, and I foresee it dropping as low as $5 or $10 in the near future. I will link the replacement camera lenses in the video description for those of you who need them. Same thing goes for the bottom panel. Heat it up and pull it away from the phone. For the next step, you will need a screwdriver. I will link replacement tools down in the video description along with the parts. There are four screws at the bottom and two screws hidden underneath that glass panel at the top. To pull the screen out from the body of the phone, you can slide your metal pry tool between the edge of the aluminum and the plastic frame of the screen and just lift it out. As we pull the front panel away from the phone, we are left with the machined aluminum back. Now the center of the phone here is aluminum and the edges, but a large chunk of the phone at the top and the bottom of the back is pure plastic all the way through. Normally I would not care if a manufacturer did this. The aluminum plastic hybrid is still relatively sturdy, but here on Google's website, it says all housed in a contoured aluminum body, but wait, there's more. An all metal design. There is not a single screw in this phone that goes from metal to metal. As a matter of fact, the six most important exterior screws of this phone go directly from plastic to plastic. It says the phone is crafted with aeronautical grade aluminum, and indeed the aluminum is there, but it's definitely not structurally benefiting the phone in any way. I feel like this is classic corporate bait and switch advertising from Huawei. But let's continue with the teardown. There's one screw next to this metal plate. We're gonna lift that off and unsnap this extension ribbon cable from the bottom. This is what leads down to the charging port. There's one signal wire here as well that we're gonna lift off and one screw holding the charging port down. Here's the charging port itself. It does have one microphone on the back. Here is the battery ribbon cable. Now to get the battery out, you have to be pretty darn careful with it. You don't want to slice the battery at all. If you slice the battery, it ends up smelling like burnt Skittles and will damage the phone. Make sure you do not damage the screen ribbon cable underneath the battery either. Here's the loudspeaker. Be gentle with those two contact points on the side there. If those rip off, your loudspeaker will not work anymore. Here are a few of the dovetail joints that I've mentioned in a couple of my previous videos. You can see here how thick the aluminum is and how small of a contact point that the plastic screw connections have with the aluminum midframe. There's two screws here with the metal plate that hold down the headphone jack and the front camera. Here's the front camera, it's an eight megapixel. Here's the headphone jack. Interesting little guy. It has a funky rubber hat on it for some reason. I can go ahead and put his hat back on. There's two screws here that hold down the ribbon cable for the screen. It's gonna pop off that connector and then lift up the screen ribbon cable just like a little Lego. Unsnap the other side of the signal wire. One more screw holding down the motherboard and then we can snap the motherboard out from the frame. Here's a few more of those dovetail joints that hold the aluminum part of the phone to the plastic part of the phone. Rear facing cameras here it has a relatively interesting design. 12.3 megapixels and it has that little plastic bit right there on the ribbon cable. The camera itself sits right in between the motherboard so that little clear plastic piece is to help support the ribbon cable of the camera so it doesn't kink or bend. The fingerprint scanner is also replaceable. Now here is the screen. This particular component has the glass, the AMOLED, and the frame of the screen all attached as one, and this would be the ideal part to buy if you can find it. I will link these down in the video description below if they're available. Usually manufacturers sell the glass and the AMOLED as one component, and then you have to use a bunch of heat to separate the screen from the frame of the screen. Usually the display, in this case the AMOLED, will not survive the replacement process, so your new screen has to work when you re-adhere it onto the frame of the screen and then install it back into the phone. So try to buy it with the frame and intact with the screen. Go ahead and set the motherboard back into place. Get the headphone jack with his little hat. Slip that down in with the front camera. There's two screws holding that metal plate down. Gonna snap the AMOLED screen ribbon cable into the motherboard. Same thing with this little wire connector. And then tuck it down to the side so it doesn't get pinched anywhere. There's one screw holding the loudspeaker in place. Set that down. 
Charging port goes in, one screw at the top of that as well. Same little signal wire cable, pinch that down and tuck it into the plastic frame. The extension ribbon cable goes from the charging port to the motherboard, two screws holding down that metal bracket, and then tuck the other side of this bracket in next to the fingerprint scanner and then get that screw into the side, and then there's one more screw at the left side of the motherboard. Get that in and then test the screen before you put it back inside of the back housing to make sure everything works. Don't wanna do more work than we have to. Then you can set the whole screen contraption and motherboard down into the aluminum plastic hybrid back and then snap it down into place. Two screws up along the top and you can use the adhesive that comes with the piece of glass. Mine still has adhesive on it, so I'm just gonna press it down into place. Worked out pretty well. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Don't forget to like if this video helped you. There's four screws down along the bottom as well. And don't forget to subscribe. Speaking from a purely structural hardware perspective, this phone is not all that it's cracked up to be. And I'm pretty disappointed in the overall design. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like always, subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for behind the scenes pictures and plenty more tech teardowns. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you around.